This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, how to lose £35,000 in a matter of seconds. Do you have your paperwork? TV star Angelica Bell picks up the lunch bill. I'm so stupid! And Alex gets leery and legless. It's gone. My iPhone's gone. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is Porta Venus on the Spanish Costa del Sol, playground of the jet set and the super rich. But wherever there's this much money, you can be sure to find hustlers and con artists sniffing around for a piece of the action. Presenting Paul as the agent, Alex as the footballer, Jess as the wag, and this guy as the mark in the boat tire scam. Paul's here for phase one, the hook. He's come for an appointment to see a man about a boat. Hey John, how are you? This is John, who works for a yacht hire company. Uh, this is perfect. I hope. Paul likes the look of John's boat, but he's not thinking of hiring it for himself. Yeah, we got these clients. Um, this guy's a bit of a nightmare, just right. so you know. He's a footballer. He needs to go out Tuesday, and uh, what we had laid up for him is. Well, it's tanked, frankly. So uh, he's going to come up here, have a look around, if he's happy with it. Just go ahead. So Paul's client wants to hire a yacht, but the boat he had lined up has broken down. This could be the ideal replacement. He's going to give you a check today. Yeah. He'll pay you guys directly. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and make sure everything's okay. I'm going to leave him with you if that's okay. You mind? He's a yeah. bit. He's kind of all flash and all cash. So, right. you know, if you can put up with it for half an hour. All flash and all cash. That must be rich footballer Alex. Here he comes with his glamorous girlfriend Jess for phase two, the bait. It's funny because, you know, good. Morning. good. Hiya. Hiya. Nice now that everyone's here, the scam's full steam ahead. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, it looks great. Can we have a look around? Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to leave you to it. And, uh, hopefully I'll catch you before, uh, before you're done. All right, thanks very much for coming okay. out. No really worries. appreciate no worries. your help. Paul leaves Alex and Jess with the mark. He's going to give them the grand tour of the yacht. If it all goes to plan, Paul will be back later to seal the deal. Good job I didn't wear my heels today, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Wow. Let you on board, I'll show you then. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's slightly bigger than the one we had last yeah. year. Already impressed, yeah. they head downstairs to inspect the three luxurious cabins and ensuite bathrooms. Yeah. And then complete the tour on the upper deck. Are you planning to have it for the day? Yeah, yeah. I think. Day. Yeah, I think it's next Tuesday. Yeah, start for one day. We're sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you not going to like? You know. It's just what this rich young couple is after. All that's left to do is to pay for the day's hire. Can you spell that for me? Just as Paul promised, Alex makes out a check. It's for a whopping four thousand pounds. Everyone's happy with the deal. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Especially John, who's just made his company four grand in the space of ten minutes. Sounds almost too good to be true. Here comes Paul for the final part of the scam. The catch. So far, everything the hustlers have done is to convince the mark they're genuine customers, but they're not remotely interested in having a day out at sea. 
They're fishing for what's in the Mark's wallet. Hey, John. What did they say? They're happy. Um, of course, it's the financial side of the arrangement that Paul's really interested in. How much did he pay you? 4,000 on check. You're kidding. Is that right or wrong? What an idiot. Um, it's not right, actually. Uh, he's supposed to pay you guys 3,500. And five to you. And 500 to me. Alex's check was for too much money and included the £500 commission that should have gone to Paul. If it's not right, then it's not right. Well, do you want to... Suggest? This is the crucial moment. Can Paul extract any money from the mark? Do you have any pounds? I mean, do you want to... No, I've got nothing. Doesn't sound good. Has this scam run aground? Um, you got 700 euros. Bingo. The mark remembers he has a big wad of euros. Well, what's 500 pounds in euros? Let's check that out. And Paul helpfully calculates the exchange rate into pounds. So 500 pounds is 620 euros or something like that. Well, do you have 600 euros there? Is that your thought? Yeah, I'll, I'll cover the 20. Wanting to do what's right and thinking that he's covered by Alex's cheque, the mark happily hands over 600 euros in cash. All right, well, that's good. So that's a good deal. So he's taking it for Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he's said paid you. So right. it seems like everyone's a winner. Paul's got 600 euros in his pocket, and the mark has a cheque for 4,000 pounds. But there's one crucial difference. The euros are real. But of course, the cheque isn't worth the paper it's written on. The Mark's just fallen for one of the oldest tricks in the book. He's paid out money against the cheque that will bounce the second he tries to cash it. Well, yeah, obviously I believed it. I wasn't expecting anything to be not right. Then the cheque was wrong. So he took the equivalent in euros. I mean, I don't see that many cheques, so I don't do a lot of the transactions. But, you know, if we do get a cheque, it's, it's paid in, and then you don't find out until the bank tell you it's... It's not good. This scam works very well because we're offering the boat company an opportunity to make some very easy money. They don't really have to do anything and they'll just make some extra cash. Also, this scam takes place in a world where people have money. It's boats, it's fast cars, it's marinas. There is a general assumption that the people who are interested in getting boats or are interested in the fast cars, they've got money. If anybody ever puts you in this situation, you should always think it might be a scam. It's been used by con artists for years. In any transaction, always insist on being paid the correct amount, no matter what the circumstances, and wait for that money to clear before acting on it. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers have come to this exclusive Riverside restaurant to do battle with Celebrity Fame Academy contestant and one show reporter, Angelica Bell. <laughs> Are you hungry? You better be hungry. Peckish. Yeah. Well, they say when you're in, you know, polite company, that one shouldn't You're not bubble. in polite company. You're not one shouldn't one shouldn't bubble, one should nibble. Oh. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Go for the goblin. We'll yeah. yeah. that we will. <laughs> but before getting down to business, they decide it would be rude not to order some lunch. The food here doesn't come cheap. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Nor does the champagne. I think we could do with a winning. And as for dessert, I'll have four of them. For 75 dabs. It's really good. Four of those. Unusually, the hustlers seem in the mood for splashing the cash. Yeah, they're paying. Well, okay. yeah. How much was it again? 75 pounds. Each. Each. Oh. That's right. These fancy desserts, which come with three aged cognacs, cost an eye watering 75 pounds a pop. Uh, you eat and you drink. You eat and you drink. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh my god, mm. this is. Wow, mm. Caramelized hazelnut. Mm. Mm. It's a good, exceptional. Mm. This is like amazing. It's very, very, very good. Mm. Mm. Should we get the bill? Yeah, we should. Can we have the um, 
This is going to be fun. She's right, but not for whoever has to pay it. Thank you very much. OK. Ouch. Can't be that bad. Let's see. Oh, my God. Yes. That's a lot for four people. <laughs> what do you think? £767.13. and 13 pence. 767 So how are we going to do this? Mm. Okay, well, pass me the bill. Time to serve up Angelica's challenge. I've got a proposition for you. Go on. OK. I'm going to pass you the bill. I want you to hand the bill to whoever you want to pay the bill. Does that sound fair? OK. OK. And that's it, and we leave. That's it. Um, there are a couple of rules um, I'm going to show you. I want you to stand up. I'm going to place the bill on your feet, just like that. Keeping your feet together, heels on the floor if you're wearing heels. I want you to bend over forward, pick the bill up with both hands, and then pass it to either Paul, Alex, myself, or keep it. Does that sound fair? Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, in order for someone else to pick up the bill, all Angelica needs to do is pick it up herself first, from her feet, and hand it to them. But the hustlers okay. always have a trick up yeah. their sleeves, as she's about to find out. OK, you need to stand next to me, so I want you to stand here, because the light's really good, with your heels right against the glass. No, I did have... Feet together. OK. OK? You need to bend over forward. Use both hands, pick up the bill. The challenge is on. Ooh. Ooh. Can I move my feet? Nope. Nope. Feet flat on the floor, I can't move your heels. Bend over forward, pick up with both hands. Bend over forward. Turns out, this is much harder up against a window than standing in the middle of the room. I can't, can't bend, I can't bend feet. my feet. No, you just need to reach over forward and get it. Is this doable? We certainly hope not. <laughs> you know what, I don't think you're going to get it. How long are we going to wait? Do you know what I've realised? I should have drank all that drink because this would have made no difference if I was drunk. <laughs> I'm so stupid! And I might have to pay for this as well, and I haven't drunk anything. You know what? Come back to the table. She didn't stand a chance, because this con is all about balance. When Jess picked up the bill, it looked easy. That's because when she bent her upper half forwards, her bottom half could shift backwards to keep her balanced. But standing against the window, Angelica couldn't shift her weight back, which meant it was physically impossible to bend forwards and pick up the bill without falling flat on her face. We'll call it a tenner and we're even. Unless you would and, like to pay the bill. And in fact, holding it So up. another celebrity hands over a tenner. But the hustlers were kind enough to pick up the hefty lunch bill. At least that's what they told Angelica on their way out. Sorry, madam. The gentleman said you're going to pay the bill. Oh, did they? Yes. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to keep your possessions safe. First of all, always be aware of the people around you, especially in busy areas such as airports, train stations or tourist spots. If you feel that people are getting a little bit too close or bumping into you, then you may have just been the victim of pickpocketing. When you're out and about and you have a bag on you, Always wear the strap across your body and make sure that you walk with the bag away from the curb to avoid drive-by purse snatchers. Wearing your strap over one shoulder makes it too easy for people to snatch off you. Now, the last thing you want to be doing is walking around a busy marketplace with an expensive watch or necklace. The best advice anybody could give you is to leave all valuable possessions at home in the first place. It's early evening in the historic city of Oxford. Locals and tourists alike are out enjoying the many bars and restaurants in the picturesque centre. Even hustlers need to let their hair down occasionally. Alex, Paul and Jess have come to a popular bar for an evening out. There's a relaxed atmosphere in the bar and everyone is having a good time with their friends. The off-duty hustlers have a drink. And Alex orders another. And another. Yeah, it was totally cool. It seems like this particular hustler can't handle his beer. Oh. 
It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Paul and Jess aren't too impressed. What? Shush. Alex, you have had enough. Would be you have, you have had see, that's you know what? I'm going. Sorry. Jess has had enough of Alex's leery behaviour and leaves. You're just upset. Well, you're not exactly looking very classy now, are you? Well, I've had enough. We have to run out through it now. I think we should go. No, no. Paul's had enough as well. He takes charge and decides to call it a night. I think we've, we've, we've had enough. Oh, I just oh, put it down. Come on. All right. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> oh. Right. The Dudley Moore stuff is really cool. Oh, careful, sorry. Wait, sorry. Alex isn't even able to walk straight enough to get to the exit and needs some support from the pub furniture to stay upright. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Move. Sorry. Right. Come on. Oh, I'm going to street out that way. After making a bit of a scene in the bar, the hustlers finally make it out the front door. Despite appearances, Alex and Paul aren't going off to get a kebab. In fact, Suddenly, Alex is perfectly sober. So what just happened? Of course, the hostlers weren't really off duty. They were demonstrating one of the most simple but devastatingly effective scams to target tourists. Yeah. Jess stormed out to draw attention to Alex's drunken behavior. But Alex wasn't really drunk. His clumsy stumble out of the bar was just a pretense for going through some bar goers' pockets and bags. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That was an MP3 player from a woman's handbag being passed off to Paul. She left her bag on the back of her chair, an easy target for pickpockets. Sorry, I'm come sorry on, come on. Excuse me, sorry. And in the process of knocking the man's jacket to the floor, Alex lifted a digital camera and hid it under his coat. As soon as they were outside, the hustlers dropped the act and went off to repeat the whole drunken routine in another pub down the road. Two gentlemen, and um, I noticed as they sort of started leaving, they bumped into my chair. I didn't take no notice of it, to be honest. The iPod's gone. Nah. My iPod's gone. Just thought he was a bit drunk and stumbled, to be honest. Wow. There was a camera in the pocket. Uh, he's sitting there just chatting, someone st stumbled past, knocked my coat onto the ground and picked it up for me. Uh, the other one, who was obviously with him, made excuses for him, which now, in hindsight, I realise was to distract me from what was actually going on. Pretty peed off, <laughs> to be honest. Big pockets are always trying to find new ways to invade your personal space so they can get close to your belongings. Now, this works very well. We've all seen drunken people stagger in and out of pubs. And also, it uses the social etiquette, which is quite embarrassing when you're faced with someone who's falling over. People just want to help you up and send you on your way because they don't want you around their surroundings. And so that's perfect for pickpocketing. If you're ever in a restaurant or a bar or anywhere where you know potentially there could be a lot of people around you, then make sure you keep all your purse belongings inside at all times. And whatever you do, make sure you never put any valuable items in coat pockets hanging on the back of your chair. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge, and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Paul has come to this Spanish seaside bar for some refreshments, but he hasn't brought any money, just a matchbox. All right, this is a very, very, very simple bet. Okay, um, uh, we don't need these, okay? All you have to do, I'll give you a free go. Okay. With one finger, you have to lift it up and stand it so it's on its end, like that. Okay? That's it. This is kind of like a sobriety test as well. Well done. Now. You have to do it again 
And if you can, I'll buy everybody drinks. But if you can't, you, have, you all have to buy me drinks. That was just the trial run to prove that it can actually be done. From now on, they're playing for drinks. The matches, there is a flea in here, very, very, very well trained flea. Okay. Exactly the same as before. All you have to do, lift it up. Come on, man. Can you count on you. There's something going on here. It's my wallet's coming out of. Oh. My mental powers. Yeah, you've done something. Yeah, the mental. <laughs> well, well, you could do it again. You want to try again? Okay. We have to be very fair. There is absolutely nothing inside the box. the box. Well, the flea actually jumped out. You want to pick him up? <laughs> pick him up. Drop him back in there. All right. Exactly the same as before. Make sure there's nothing sticky on the glass or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's two round of drinks for me. This bet has nothing to do with invisible fleas and everything to do with basic physics. An empty matchbox is always heavier on one side than the other. This is because of the cardboard drawer sitting inside it. When the bar goer first lifted the box, she started with it the right way up, with the cardboard tray on the bottom and she had no trouble standing the box upright. When they started playing for drinks, Paul secretly turned the tray upside down, so the heaviest side was on top. In this position, it's almost impossible to stand up. The extra weight makes the box overbalance before it's upright, causing it to topple over. Come on, kid. You know what? Two's enough. <laughs> enough. The bar's over there. One hustler one high-vis jacket, and one £35,000 car. Gone in 600 seconds. Alex has come to this busy multi-storey car park to pick up a brand new luxury car. And if his plan works, that's exactly what he'll be driving out of here in just 10 minutes. The car park he's chosen is used by tourists and the general public, and is also a base for a major car rental agency. Alex sets about looking official in his fluorescent jacket, but he needs to work quickly to avoid attracting unwelcome attention. And what he really doesn't need is an employee of the hire car company throwing a spanner in the works. Alex knows he's been spotted and needs to come up with a legitimate sounding reason for being here. Are, are all your cars here or just the ones that say? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's fine. I'm just working for the car parks to see the regulation of how many people are using the car park and everything. Yeah? Okay, thanks. That seems to have done the trick. It's just around the corner downstairs. No, just walk down this ramp and do a U-turn. For the scam, Alex needs some customers to rent one of the cars. Could this be the opportunity he's been looking for? Looks like Alex could be in luck. It's time for Alex to put the plan in gear. He's going to make these girls give him their car. Are you for this one? Yeah. All oh, right. OK. One second, because I've just had a call from them downstairs. Um, Within seconds, Alex is holding the keys to this £35,000 luxury car. I'm going to have to give you a different one. But this one, we've just noticed that there's a slight problem with one of the rear wheels. It's just not behaving properly. Um, do you have your paperwork? The girls already saw Alex on their way to the rental office, so don't question his authority. They hand over all their paperwork. And do you have your exit ticket as well? It belongs to the car, it matches with the car. I'll be 30 seconds, I'm going to come down here. I promise I'll be two seconds, yeah? So far, so good. He's got everything he needs to make his getaway. The other one's a bit more powerful than this one, so you have a bit, a bit more fun. Alex has got his hands on the car, but can he drive it away from right under their noses? He doesn't hang about and makes his way out of the car park, driving straight past the rental office in the process and using the genuine exit ticket for the barriers, which the girls kindly gave him. 
the whole operation has taken just 10 minutes. The Max soon realised something isn't quite right with this situation. Eventually, they decide to ask the rental staff what's going on. The guy was checking the, all the cars. Yeah. Oh, no. What's happening? Did you know and then you jacket on, eh? Yeah. Tell him No, because he's not asking me if I got the cars. And I said, no, no, I know nothing. It dawns on the rental agent and the marks that they've been the victims of a con trick and that their car is gone. Some bank swapped it from us. He said there was a problem with the back wheel, didn't there? It just looked like he worked here. Oh, what the hell is going on? You can't, you can't just trust any stranger, to be honest. You can't just give a keys to any stranger. We know about, we know about all this crime that's happening. Why would you give a, a keys to someone you don't know? It always amazes us how people drop their guard when they see a fluorescent jacket. And the clever thing about this scam is it fits in perfectly to the scenario. They go up to pick up the car and here's somebody who obviously works for the company because they're wearing a fluorescent jacket. That just makes it easy for Alex to give them instructions, take the car and the paperwork and leave. Modern expensive vehicles are actually quite difficult to steal. They've got sophisticated security systems and sophisticated locks on them. So the best way to be able to steal them is actually to get the keys. If somebody comes up to you and says, give me your keys, unless you're absolutely certain they are who they say they are, don't part with them. Ask that person to go back to the car rental office and double check. If they are who they say they are, they'll walk back with you with no problem whatsoever. And if they're a thief, they'll be on their toes immediately. So remember, even when you're away from home, you should always keep your wits about you. <laughs> that way, you will avoid getting hustled on holiday. That right just took that car. And they're back to pry open our purses with another new episode the same time next week. Next tonight, it's comedy from Family Guy. Thank you.